Assalamu alaikum. Hello viewers. Today we will be talking about lofts and boundary wall spaces. Technically, both these are pretty much the same for most of the cases, even though they have some differences. So we will be talking about them today. Let's open a new Lofts mean actually to lift something up. And so in 3D dimension, you just put some 2D sketches in different planes and just lift the third dimension from one to another this is kind of loft and the boundary is sim just similar and in case of boundary they just consider this as directions so let's just jump into it and for that we just sketch a simple circle in the top plane so you go to sketch draw a circle and let's say dimension is about two For definition, we just add these two point relations since we have discussed about the defined geometries that when some geometry is defined with respect to the origin, so we just merge them and the entire sketch turns into a black. So it's just a simple introductory system. So I'm just going to keep this tutorial as simple as possible. Now I just exit the sketch and produce another plane and set the reference to the top plane and set a distance of let's say two meters and we start a sketch in this plane i'm just gonna keep it as simple and for that i just produce a hexagon and it's polygon and you can select the amount or number of sides that you need from this number and it shows the number of sides so you can select the position from the xy coordinate system but as i'm going to define it so i'm just leave it as it is and it would choose when you click on some place the coordinate by itself another thing is that the inscribed circle or circumscribed circle this two is one is when the circle is within the polygons and tangent to each line, it shows a preview. And in case of circumscribed, you get the circle touching all the edges of the polygon. So, and since it's a immaterial for the time being, so I just leave whatever it is and select the polygon to be equal to this circle. Now, if we dimension, go for the dimension, the outer circle will be 2. And this defines the outer radius. So, defining the external geometry of our specimen. Now, I just exit the sketch and start the loft boss base. And it prompts you to select two sketches. Or you can select, of course, multiple sketches, of course. And in this case, you need to specify the points that joining the two sketches. For this, let's say, since this was a prompted, this was the last modified sketch, it, it's auto automatically selected, and I need to select the circle. Let's just select the circle, and there's a preview. And these two connecting points are going to be controlled. Are going to control the entire pattern of the geometry and since this you can pull these two to select the amount of curvature you need so we can add some kind of start end constraints and since this isn't that much of available we go for normal to pull for them and select the amount of you need and you can even pull these as well and if you cross a specified limit it just shows off the preview that means it cannot produce a defined geometry and in case of the end, co end constraints you can add similar thing to produce better finish for your sketches uh, other models 
and this produces a solid lofted body and you can also select the thing feature as shown before and let's just delete this feature and I'm just willing to add some additional things like guided curves or things like those for that I just start another sketch on the right plane the rule of guided curve is similar to that of we have used in surf boss base I'm just gonna add a simple art out here exit this sketch and uh, go for the lofted boss base this is pre-selected as guide the solid works things it would be something like that and I get to select the two profiles and this time if you click ok the error shows that these two aren't intersected so we need to intersect these two and I believe we know the procedure to do so just select this one to edit and merge these two points you can also add like just piece relationships between two so exit the sketch and this time I select the guide curve manually and the sketch has to be these two and since we have selected these two points uh, so the preview is something like awkward you, you these is sometimes very useful as you can use them in defining various type of solid bodies or surfaces and just move it a little while and in this case as we had seen before the difference is the pattern is following a bit of curved shape out here still you we can add add we can add start and end tendencies to the limit that is allowed and you can always calculate things from your design criteria but the design the model will still follow the curve shape we have defined and uh, another thing is going to be sent line parameter and we'll d be discussing this uh, pretty soon so add thin features to produce hollow shape you can add the thickness say 0.005 We can always hide things or show things from here by extending the tree. Now let's just do this one as well and just go for boundary boss base for this instance. In this case, the two sketches are replaced by two directions. And I select these two as to be like this and as you can see the boundary boss base has a lesser amount of flexibility on the sketches and you can also add normal to as things like this and another thing these lines are the curvature cons to realize the change or transitions in curvatures along the path you can also add some other directions as well we can add some other options align with next section uh, align with normal sections you can you can hide the curvature cons to see the model better you can add thin features from this section as well and the zebra stripes are the ones 
to show the curvatures on a typical zebra stripe form. That's it. The, the difference between the curvature curve and zebra stripe is simply roughly that, like this. That would be all about the boundary and the loft section. But let's just do it for the time being. In case of loft, we can show another thing is that we can always add some sketches to any intermediate planes by right clicking it and selecting add loft sections. The plane we're going to select is going to be the produced sketch holding it. This plane we select is going to hold the sketch that is within transition of these two sketches. So for that we just select it and and see the sketch that has been produced. Here we see the gradual change in the sketch that has turned into a polygon from a circle. So the edges are still round out here. This is extremely extremely useful when you are trying to produce some reference sketches from the shape of a 3D object. So now we exit the sketch and the last thing about loft is the centerline parameter. For that we start another sketch. We take some reference geometry and produce some planes with reference to the form plane and each would be let's say 10 centimeters distant from each other and we would select to be six planes and we need another set of planes that's it would be with reference to the right plane let's say that would be enough now let's see what happens when I just produce a circular section and it's commonly used in case of duct designs in case of households of course I just arbitrarily take a circle and just dimension it let's say point zero three I exit the sketch and this would be the same for a few more planes and another would be on this plane. So let's just sketch in plane 2 and just convert the entities of the previous circle and it's just the same section producing out here and let's just say we want pipe of this section which is bent upon this plane so exit the sketch and produce another sketch on this dimension the same it wouldn't be any problem even if it is a different section since loft allow you to change the section throughout the path and it would be better if all the circles have the same level of center points that this would just ease up the center line parameter otherwise it would just you need to produce a 3d sketch only so let's just produce another sketch on let's say this plane exit the sketch and click this plane to start another sketch for the time being I'm keeping it the same dimension as the uh, other ones 
and exit this case to produce another, just another one at this plane. And this time, this circle will be converting it on this plane. Now for the center line, we just produce another sketch on the top plane that's connecting all the center points. We start another sketch and draw a spline through all these circles. This is the sketch and now we produce the lot feature. By default it just takes this as a guide curve but we just want this to be the center line and choose the profiles serially. See we have a smooth transition out here and if I deselect this, see the results. It's just for the time being allow it and we see these bends on the transition of the planes but if we add this center line we get a very smooth curve with the uniform section this area which is still bent is just because I have added a little too much curvature on the center line so if we edit this part we could still just demolish this error as well you can always edit the sketch even just by pulling it or pushing it let's just add some straightenings there much better we have a much smoother transition tube so this should be all about the basics of lofts and boundary boss bases and this concludes the basic features available in SOLIDWORKS. In our next section we might just start working with surfaces or sheet metals and sequentially we might just go for flow simulations and simulations as well. So this would be all for this tutorial about lofts and boundary boss bases. If you have enjoyed it please hit the like button and please like share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.